Over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to create assignments in Blackboard through the Tri-County Technical College Online Blackboard LMS. To get started, we're going to go into Blackboard and we're going to go to an active course. I'm going to do this within our Blackboard sandbox. This is the training environment that we work in. So I'm going to go down into my actual training folder. Now, in order to create content, you first off have to make sure your edit mode is on. You'll notice that I don't have any actual menus up here. If you ever go in and you don't have that, always make sure that your edit mode is on. Now you'll notice I have build content, assessments, tools, and partner content. Assignments actually show up under assessments. So I'm going to click on the assessments tab and come down to assignment. That takes you to the assignment screen. You'll notice anywhere with this yellow star is a uh, required field. There are a few of those and you'll notice those as we go. So I'm going to just call this sample assignment for training. You do have to have a name and you can also choose a different color. So if you want to color code these, you, you're welcome to do that. You have set colors or if you know a specific color code, you can do that as well. I'm actually going to set this one as kind of a dark faded red. That's what color the title of the assignment is going to be. Now, you want to be careful not to color code them based on some specific content because a, um, a screen reader is not going to be able to read the color code. And the color code can't have a specific meaning. So just be careful that you don't have a specific meaning show up in there. The next window is probably your most important window. This is where you're going to put your content for the assignment as well as any instructions. So I always put the directions at the, at the top. Uh, view the video and respond to the questions on the attached worksheet. Submit the um, completed worksheet to the assignment when by the due date. Now I'm going to go in and italicize that just to, you know, for um, just to bring attention to it. Doesn't change the meaning, but it does draw attention. Now you'll notice I said view the video. That means I want to put something in here that is is a video. So I do have um, the option of doing a YouTube video or some other kind of video. So I'm going to go into YouTube and just find a video on. Sure, why not? Let's do the Spanish flu. Um, here is a very short little valuable lesson on the Spanish flu. So what I'm going to do is you actually do have to go up and click the um, URL. So I'm going to come back over here and you'll notice um, I've, I have copied the URL. I have the address. You have a, um, a media embedded media link here or you actually have a YouTube videos link here. Um, you can browse them here if you want to. Seems like it's moving very slowly, so I'm going to show you the alternate way of doing it. If you come here to the insert media, you just need the URL. So I'm going to pull it down so you can see it better. You can do insert the URL and browse, and you'll notice, whoop, hit two buttons at once, you'll notice here is your um, your preview. Okay, um, it is an, um, you can do it a couple of different ways. It is an iframe. That's going to be your default for this particular type of video. And I'm going to hit insert. Now you'll notice that the, uh, the video doesn't show, it shows a placeholder. Okay, it's this yellow box. If you want to make the video bigger, you can right click your mouse on the video and now you'll notice you have the, your, your, uh, corner boxes and you can actually drag that to make it a bit bigger if you'd like. It is a little bit small there initially so I do want to make it a little bit bigger. So there's my video. Okay, So I put in here we're going to view the video and respond to the questions in the attached worksheet. So the question is then how do I attach the worksheet? I've got a couple of different options. I can insert a file here if I'd like by attaching a file here. So I could insert a file 
directly into the assignment, in which case, I'm going to move this file back down here, um, I can insert from my computer or from my content collection. So let's say I want to browse my computer. And let's say I'm going to go into, I'm just going to choose a particular handout. Um, let's say a student guide. This is not going to be directly related to the Spanish flu, but that's okay. It's just to show you how it works. I'm going to actually grab this. This is a student guide to Blackboard assignments. Um, that is the name of the link. Do I want it to open another window? Yes, I do. And I do want to include alt text. Alt text just tells them what the uh, the file looks like. So it's going to give some kind of image attachment to it. So I would, if this were Spanish flu, I would say Spanish flu um, video handout. Okay. Then I would come down a little further, and I'm going to slide this up a little bit, and hit Submit. I'm going to hit Submit one more time. And you'll see right here, it, it's going to show the actual name of the file. Okay, That is one way that you can attach files. So if you want to attach it directly into the assignment text box, that's fine. You can do it that way. The other way to do it, where they have to open it and download it directly, is to attach down here an assignment files. If you're doing multiple files, this may be an easier way. You, same thing. Go to Browse My Computer. Let's say this is the one I want to use. This time we're going to do a different file. I'm going to hit Open. This time you have a couple of different options. So you have your file attached. Now you can actually change the name of it. So I can actually call it the Spanish Vlu video handout. Okay. Um, and this way, when I, when I attach it, it's going to show up just below the title of the assignment, but it would actually title it Spanish Flu Video Handout. The other thing that you can do here is you could call it Spanish Flu Video Handout and come back here and actually hyperlink it. So you can create a hyperlink and you can browse your computer and actually um, create a link to a file instead. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. It just depends on what you want to do. Um, any of them will work. Either inserting it as a file here or inserting it as an assignment file are typically the easiest ways. That's what I would recommend. Um, if you have multiple files, this is going to be the easiest way to do this. You're going to want to connect it with one of these two. The next thing down, you don't have to put a due date, but I would recommend it because this also shows up on their calendar. And I'll show you in just a second how. So let's say this is going to be due by the 20th. And I want to say it's due by 5 p.m. I don't, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of saying by midnight because I don't want to be up at midnight checking to see if this thing is done. But a lot of instructors do that. It is entirely up to you when you want to set that deadline. If I want to say I want to check it by Friday at the end of the workday, Friday 5 p.m. Okay. Possible points. I'm going to say uh, this is a 25-point assignment. You do not have to go with 100 points on every assignment. You don't. Um, you can set them for whatever you want. I'm going to show you the grading options here in a second and how you can show the points possible as well as the percentage. So it's not even something where the students necessarily um, have to only see the point values. I will tell you, make sure they understand that if it's a 25 point assignment and they get 25, that's actually 100 points. And it's not a 25% because they do read that 25 and they go, oh crap, I made an F because in their mind that's a 25%. So I'm going to show you in just a minute how you can actually show both of those, but make sure you communicate that if they look and they see 25, that's actually out of 25 points. If you have a rubric, you can pull that here as well. I'm not going to go into how to develop rubrics at this point because that's actually a whole separate training and that can take quite a while to get through. So I don't want to do that at this point, uh, but we will do some additional trainings in the future, um, even through the online platform to help you with that. So if you're interested in doing that, keep your eyes open and we'll, we'll do that. But if you've done anything with rubrics, this is actually where you would select a rubric to attach that. Submission details, um, you can do individual or group. We do recommend, at least here at the beginning, that you allow for multiple attempts. Uh, one thing that we are stressing is we are kind of in a triage scenario right now. Nobody really expected six months ago that we would be in a situation that we are. Um, 
our students did not necessarily sign up for online courses. Many of them have never taken an e-learning course or an online course, and they very well may submit the wrong file. They may submit uh, before they're done. Uh, there are a lot of scenarios here. So we very, very much recommend that you allow for multiple attempts. Uh, especially at the beginning of this situation. So I would suggest multiple attempts, set at least three. Uh, that gives some, some wiggle room there. It shows a little bit of grace, uh, allows for mistakes to be made without it necessarily creating a scenario where they are failing assignments the first time out. Um, again, remember, many of our students have probably never had to interact with a scenario anywhere close to this. So it's really important that we, that we create an opportunity for them to make mistakes and still be able to fix this. So again, multiple attempts, I would go with at least three. You can go with unlimited if you want. That might be a little bit high, but you can go with um, at least three is what I would suggest. If you want to do safe assign, what that does is it's actually a plagiarism checker. So if you're doing um, essays, short answer, that kind of stuff, it will actually check it against their database to make sure that there's no significant amount of duplication. Uh, of text. So it's going to actually check for known plagiarism. So if it is a, a longer assignment, an essay, something of that nature, it will automatically check that. Let's turn that part down so we can see the next. Grading options. You can enable anonymous grading. Um, if you have a, a, an assistant in the class, you can also delegate grading. That we don't tend to do very much at Tri-County. And then the last part here is display of grading. The default primary grade is a score. You do have the option of a secondary score of percentage, and that's what I was just talking about. It'll display in the grade center only, but if they happen to go look in my grade, it'll actually show that for them. So they could see the score and then the percentage. It'll help them understand what their grades actually look like. And then you have to show, is it going to be included in the grade center? The default is yes. If it's something you want to use as a formative assessment, but you don't want it to count against them, um, or it's a practice uh, assignment, you don't want it to count on their grades, you would uncheck that. You also want it to show in the student grades. If you don't want it to show, then you turn that off. Um, if you want to show the average and the median statistics, you can do that. I'm not a big fan of showing that kind of information to the whole class, but if you feel like it's necessary, you can do that. If this is checked, it's going to become available immediately. Uh, if you don't want it available yet, you can uncheck that. If you want to limit availability, so let's say I want this one to be available tomorrow at 8 a.m. And I want it to go away um, on the 20th at 4.59 p.m. It's due at 5 p.m. So if they get it at 4.59, they they can't possibly get it done by 5. So that would be fairly, uh, that would be a fair placement. So they would have two days to do that assignment before the due date. Okay. It would show up at 8 a.m. It would close at 4.59. They would have to have it submitted by 5. So um, that would be a fair assessment. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and set this at 5. And that way, if somebody tries to submit it at 5, it would, it would show. Uh, once you have all of these things in place, let's double check all of our settings and all of our pieces. We have our video included. We have our directions. We have our our assignment um, PDF attached. We actually have attached two different ways. We have our due date and our time. We have our possible points. We have our grade display information. We do have it in included in the grade calculations and showing in the student grades. We have when we want it to show as an active assignment. And now we are ready to submit our assignment. It will go to the bottom of the page, always goes to the bottom of the page. So you want to scroll all the way to the bottom. You'll notice it shows everything in one place. So our video is right here. Okay. Uh, we also have our, here's our handout. Remember the link to the handout is here. You also have the link to the handout here. You don't necessarily have to do both, but you can see the difference. One of them attaches at the top. One of them attaches at the bottom. It's the same file. If you click on this, it's going to open in a separate thing. They would have to download it. If you have a PDF that can be completed online, 
they do need to um, download that PDF and complete it on their computer in order to be able to save those changes. So do keep in mind that if it's a PDF that they have to complete online, like on their computer itself and upload a completed PDF, um, they would need to be able to download it to their hard drive. They can't complete it in the, the browser and then upload it. It won't save changes that way. I have worked with some faculty who are trying to do it that way. It's perfectly fine to do. Students can complete it and then upload it back in, but they have to do it on their hard drive. It can't be done in the, in the browser. Now, real quickly, I want to show you what that looks like in the calendar. So I'm going to scroll all the way back up to the page. We have the course calendar here, and it should show, okay, so 5 p.m. you'll see right here. I can click on that. Sample assignment for training. Um, the students would obviously not see edit this assignment. They would see a link to the assignment. Um, so you can see here what the calendar it is, what the due date and due time is. If there was a description of the assignment, it would go here. But they would actually be able to click the link to go directly to it. Um, the good thing is it shows on the actual calendar for them. So it shows on their home page as well. Any assignments that they have that are um, are with a due date are going to show up on their calendar and it will show up with a specific due date and it shows up on their calendar no matter what the course is. They can choose which courses they want to see and which ones they don't. Uh, but it is one more tool that they can use to help them stay up to date on what's going on. And if, if we're pushing everything through Blackboard, it, it centralizes their ability to keep up with everything so it does help them out um, that is a relatively quick and um, brief but hopefully um, thorough enough to get you started uh, exploration of blackboard assignments uh, we will have more training going up over the coming days and weeks hopefully this uh, scenario will not go into the coming weeks but if it does we will be providing you with additional support and training as well as some online real-time support sessions as well where you can come in and ask additional questions as you uh, run into problems or, or you have some ideas of things that you would like to try so keep your eyes open keep your uh, your ears open in spark as well as the it resource page for blackboard and uh, let us know if we can be of any more help and we will be in touch with more training as we go Thank you very much.